What's up, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. Of course, I am Jay Campbell, and you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my non-virtual streaming art studio with the one and only Chris Cavallini of Nutrition Solutions. Chris, what's up? What's up, man? Hey, thank you for having me today. It's awesome to have you. So Chris is actually the third person that I've done an in-person podcast with. Most of these podcasts are, of course, done re uh, remote through StreamYard interface, but we're doing it today together in Tampa. Uh, Chris lives in Tampa also. He's in South Tampa, and I'm kind of, what am I, Northwest Tampa? Yeah, this is. Citrus Park. So 25 minutes away now. 25 minutes away. He rolled up today in his amazing Lambo, pulled into my driveway. I was like, that's probably the first Lambo that's been in my neighborhood. Uh, but Chris is an amazing guy. I'm going to give you guys his backstory here in a second. Well, let me actually just give his bio. He is the owner of Nutrition Solutions. He's a former Navy diver. He has, like me, um, a background where he has been uh, arrested a few times in his life. So he has an amazing, <laughs> an amazing background story. And we're going to get to all that on the call today. But as we are in person, Chris is also a very spiritual, very high conscious dude. Um, you know, just your thoughts. I mean, obviously, you can look at the world right now as glass half empty, glass half full. Where do you see humanity going in the next five to 10 years? Well, I think winners will always find a win, a way to win, and losers will continue to find excuses as to why they're losing. I and mean, I, I have a fantastic ride. The people that I care about most are doing fantastic. And my right. objective is to keep improving every single year. It's purposeful. I mean, you have to take purposeful intentional action toward creating the life that you want. That's exactly what I've done and will continue to do. And, you know, whatever you're looking for, you're going to find. Yeah. So if you're looking for reasons to be sad and upset and cost yourself as a victim, there's plenty of reasons and opportunity where you can, you can do that. But if you're looking for something more seeking a higher purpose as you and I are, as a lot of your audiences, you absolutely can do that as well. And the, the great part about where society is now is most people are choosing the easy route. They're yep. choosing the path of victimization yes. and, you know, they're lazy, they're weak. They are, I mean, look, three quarters of the population a little bit, 40% of obese. There's a mental health epidemic crisis, if you will. So it actually has never been easier to be great because everybody else sucks. Everybody else is lazy. Everybody else is weak. Everybody else is sad. So it's actually a tremendous opportunity for people who are looking to get to the next level because the competition is virtually non-existent. Yeah, man. Well said. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, the truth is, is like you and I grew up at a time in a place where you really did have to put in work to separate yourself. And nowadays, you just have to show up. If, if you're willing to show up and have a good attitude, yeah, right, and work hard, which is the bare minimum. If working with quitters and not something, you need to be, you know, it's, hey, it's not a remarkable <laughs> achievement. It's the bare minimum. Um, and, you know, from my experience, the more you're willing to sacrifice, the further you will go in this lifetime. I think sacrifice and discomfort is the prerequisite of success. And, uh, yeah, you got to lean into it. And if you're willing to do that, you'll notice that discomfort starts to feel a little less uncomfortable. You get used to it. Yeah. And that's just the thing. Like, no matter every new level is going to require a new level of sacrifice and it's going to require a new level of you. You got to show up. I love that, man. The comfort is the key. I mean, you, you and I were talking off air is that you can't evolve without contrast, right? And obviously, the greater the contrast, the greater stimulus for the evolution. And as you were saying, like, both of us have like, you know, things that we would, you know, call as problems, issues, whatever that we defined when they happened to us in the past. But now we look at them as the greatest gift, right? Yeah. Because like those things are what, those were the fires that literally allowed us to stoke our irons and get to where we are now. True. Yeah, I was arrested 17 times before my 18th birthday, another half a dozen times after that. I had multiple felonies on my record. Shit. I'm not sure if you know this. Growing up, I was in a lot of foster homes, group homes, juvenile detention centers, and jail cells. I was subjected to abuse from a very, very young age, physical, emotional, and sexual. Sure. And, and, and I will say, I had a very fortunate upbringing. Yeah. My childhood, I was very fortunate. It's awesome. To get people, people might hear that and like, wow, oh, right. what you just said, that doesn't make any sense. And at the time, of course, I didn't look at it as that. Yeah. But as I got older and got wiser and became more evolved, I realized that going through the other person that early on in my life, it made me strong. And it put me with tools that allow me to go on and do things with my life that are considered to be statistically impossible. Yeah. So the, the, to your point, the worst thing to ever happen to you is actually the best thing to happen to you, provided you have that mindset. 
Awesome, man. Yeah. And credit to you, dude. I mean, I didn't know about the abuse and all that stuff, but I mean, I'm very familiar with it. I have family members. It didn't happen to me. You know, I grew up with oldest of nine kids. We were very, very poverty stricken. You know, we had to work and, and scramble and, you know, give a lot of effort. As you were saying, like the bare minimum was just showing up and having hard work, right? You had to also think and work and research and study and learn. But man, that kind of stuff that you were being, you know, in and out of homes. I mean, I have friends that definitely had some more experiences to you. Uh, and so I know what it's like. So again, it's a credit to you to be where you are. So let's rising above that. You know, well, why don't you talk a little bit about your Navy background though, too? I think that's pretty interesting. As Thor scratches the door and he wants to come in, but talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So as I said, I was arrested 17 times for my 18th birthday. Yeah. My senior in high school, the state of Massachusetts, basically uh, gave me an ultimatum. And that was to either join the military or go to jail. So I wish I could sit here and say that. I mean, very young age, it was always a dream of mine to one day honorably serve my country. Yeah. That wasn't the case. That yeah. wasn't the way it worked out for me. But the Navy changed my life. An argument can certainly be made that saved my life. Um, I joined the Navy and I was uh, very fortunate because I was part of a very elite community. I was a Navy deep sea diver. At the time, there was about a 70% attrition rate. I believe that's still the attrition rate. Present day. And basically, what that means is 70% of the people who go through the training will not make it. One reason or another, they'll quit. They will not be able to make certain uh, physical standards, meet academic requirements, whatever uh, varying degree of re reasons. And at that time, that was probably an uh, awakening of sort. And I realized that I wasn't, I was at no discipline, yeah. right? Because the way that I came up, my mom was a drug addict, had me at 16. My father took off before I was even born. So my dad wasn't, but I had no discipline. But I realized that I could take a little more punishment than most people. And at that point of my life, obviously being in that training, that was a good day. So I was able to make it to the training, went to my first command, and I was a uh, very lucky, fortunate, privileged to be in a community of all high value men who understood what it meant to operate with discipline, integrity, and honor, paid attention to the details. They taught me how to win. They taught me how to gear myself. They taught me how to go from being a broke, broken boy to a high value disciplined man. Our community, uh, the Navy diving community, there's actually a movie uh, made about Navy divers called Men of Honor. Yeah, it's Honor, from there. Yeah. Honor was at the, I mean, that was, that was at the, that was always what was the forefront and what was always. Present. Isn't Kevin Costner in that movie? No, it's uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba Gooding and, uh, Robert right. De Niro. Robert De Niro, yeah. So yeah. Honor was never anything. Coming up the way that I came, never anything I heard about, but it was always reinforced with everything we did, every mission, every job, every every presentation, every training evolution. And I sure did a really understand the importance of honor and what it meant to actually act with honor. And as I said, the military changed my life and instilled in in me qualities that uh, I still to this day, um, you know, heavily prioritize and incorporated into my business, my business nutrition solutions. We actually run a paramilitary style operation. Um, discipline, you know, hard work, teamwork, and, and, and winning. Winning is important. Winning needs to be prioritized. But you don't want to be a loser, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, love that. I mean, well, it, well, let's talk. I mean, yeah. so that's amazing, all that stuff. Um, my son, not my biological, but my bonus son, which I helped raise, Evan, uh, is also in the Navy. Uh, he's in his fourth year now. He's commissioned. If you can believe it, he's actually like one of the highest level guys in the Navy photography and social media. Oh, like, he's the guy. That all the famous pictures that come out now from when they're on ships and they're at sea and they have all these like big nice. landing. Yeah. It sounds kind of dorky and nerdy, but he's like really well known in the yeah, yeah. I see some guy providing all the photography, but he's super cool and he tells talks about being on ship and you know, being out at sea and all that stuff. But that's so cool. So I mean, I I again I don't have a military background. I have tons of family members that have served. Um, and so I'm very familiar with the uh, you know, the 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 so, yeah, right. eat those. Uh, just, just the whole like what it creates from a behavioral standpoint in men, and of course women. Now, yeah, of course. Because there's a lot of women now in there too. But it really, you're right, man. Like if you come from a a background where you don't have discipline, you never had a dad to beat the shit out of you yeah. and teach manners and discipline and all that stuff. Sure. It's a really good thing for you, and obviously that helped you. It helped me immensely because they recognized that they saw potential in me that I perhaps didn't see in myself. Sure. They knew my past, recognized that I had certain qualities that were not becoming a, a navy deep sea diver and they, they they squared me away and and what that entailed wasn't always comfortable in fact most times it was very they put their foot up my ass when needed and if me yeah. house back then it was needed a lot so i want to talk about nutrition solutions in a second but yeah. i also want to talk about your fitness level because for you guys that don't know him 
this dude is unbelievably conditioned. Like, I, I don't want to say like cheesy, always jacked and, you know, he's ripped and all that. I mean, like he is a 40 year old plus guy and he is straight up one of the most conditioned people I've ever seen. And that's coming from someone who is conditioned, right? And stays conditioned year round. I mean, he has got an amazing physique. Did you, had you, you know, met the iron game at that point or did this all come later? That's a good question. So I've been fit, statistically speaking, my entire life. Mm. I started working out 14 years old. When I went into high school, we had access to a weight room. Sure. And I utilized it. And the awesome. gym for me was an outlet where I could feel significant. Back then, I didn't really feel that yeah. much. So when I was in there, I felt something that I never experienced before. And I quickly fell in love with uh, with. But did you have somebody that was like an old man, father figure, teaching you the iron? Or did you just literally buy yourself? So when I was in eighth grade, I used to take a bus to a train to another bus, do a gym, a local YMCA, and I would wait outside of the one of the exits for somebody to walk out. When they walk out, I would run in. I would sneak in the weight room and I would watch the guys that were in there that were older who had physiques that yeah, of course, low inspired decent. Yeah. And I would watch what they did and then I would do it. That's awesome. that's how I got started. But you know, that was a long time ago. I'm 40 years old now. Yeah. Um, it's been a constant evolution and progression through the journey, if you will. I mean, I'm the CEO of a lifestyle transformation company. Sure. So if Heidi was a just fat, just lazy, gelatinous, you know, oh, hot, hot, floppy fuck. I don't know that that it does. <laughs> Right being the uh, image and reputation of our brand, but I take the lifestyle seriously. I, I leading by example is important to me, but what I've also noticed is the better shape that I'm in physically, the better shape I become mentally, or the better shape I'm in mentally, the more I'm able to, to do with my just life. Aristotle, the Greeks, remember? I mean, again, we walked all these values, right? Like our society, as you said, is a steaming dumpster fire at this point, but Aristotle was like a sound mind builds a sound mind. Yeah. And, and I mean, the Greeks understood that you could not have all the other stuff, you know, the spiritual, the intellectual without the physical involved. It all starts. With physical. It's absolutely. Yeah, it does. Like, and people, but people don't understand that, you know, they. That's because people are fat well, and lazy so, and undisciplined. Well, so a good point though, that we can really take from this, because I love how you said that, you know, I'm the CEO of a transfer, a lifestyle transformational company, because you do have an amazing, which we'll talk about in a second, literally. Uh, a, a, a meal prep company. Essentially, you you create healthy, whole, holistic, nutritious meals, which I've had and I have in my refrigerator. I've been blessed to get them, guys. They are amazing. Uh, we're going to be writing a blog. It's going to also be uh, around his company and you know explaining like what he does. But I mean, I highly recommend for everybody who's in the Jay Campbell ecosystem to start purchasing their meals, whether you're a faster or you know a keto bro, a carnivore bro, whatever. His stuff is insane. My entire family, all my kids. In fact, when he came here today to the house, Ma Monica and the girls were like, uh, "Can we give you some criticisms and you know some comments?" He's like, "Of course." Like, give, give me the back. That's how I feel. Like, yeah. I mean, but his stuff is amazing. But the truth is, is like what you said. You're you're, you're a CEO of a transformational lifestyle company or product. And bro, let's just be honest because it's me and you right now. Like the majority of people today, even in the quote unquote fitness influencer. Lifestyle transformation space or fat slums. I mean, I mean, how many people online who sell products are actually living representations, embodiments of what they push? You know, I, I don't have that answer. Twenty percent or less. Bro. I, I don't pay attention to that. I, uh, I, but you know, I'm acutely aware that that's a thing. Um, you know, I kind of busy with my own stuff. Sure, I have a hard time keeping up my own stuff. Not going to give my attention to anything that's not going to give me power, give me energy, give me inspiration. Of course. But yeah, I mean, I think that at the end of the day, it is what it is. I think people need to have a certain degree of self awareness. And if you don't have that awareness, that you can't see that and you're investing you're in a product from somebody who's fat, somebody who's lazy, somebody who's actually doesn't actually believe in the product or, or is actually using the product, I think that's your fault. I think you're a dumbass and you need to wake the fuck up. I think that's the world that we live in these days. You asked earlier about the state of humanity and society. I think a lack of awareness is probably a society's biggest problem. And the, and the issue is, as far as I can tell, is people are unaware about the fact that they're unaware. 100%. You know? No, 100%. That's actually great. You know, I like to call people that you're referring to as wishful thinkers. Yeah. They're not living in reality. Yeah. If you don't have the reality of awareness, which is exactly what you said, like, uh, you know, Costanator calls it the code of awareness. Mm -hmm. Babies are born with the code of awareness, yeah. right? Like we have everything. The matrix hasn't diluted our thought processes, hasn't dumbed us down, hasn't made us sew into the material and all that stuff. But like 
most people never have any awareness after what, two years old? They're, they're indoctrinated by their yeah. parents, whatever yeah. religion they're forced to believe in, whatever political philosophy, whatever style of food. You know, as you just said, most people don't even teach your kids exercise or fitness or anything anymore because everybody's so fat. Everybody yeah. is so instant. You know, there's an app yeah. for this, there's yeah. an app for that. So it's like society is essentially one in Rome. Society, not to get a better point, because society has essentially fallen to a point where we are probably witnessing the second collapse of Rome right now. And so, as you're saying, it's never been easier if you are a disciplined human being who is self aware to be successful in the world. This is true. And the, the, the thing is, I don't want to be on here like I'm being mean to people, but this is the truth. And people need to tell themselves the truth. Yeah. The truth isn't always going to feel good. In fact, usually if that truth is going to benefit you in some way, shape, or form, it's actually not going to be. But that feeling, that feeling of shittiness, that triggering sensation that you're perhaps experiencing when you hear me say something like that, indication that that's something you need to lean into. Uh, a shaman once told me during an 18 hour ayahuasca ceremony, what offends you is what lacks within you. That's exactly right. And I think he absolutely nailed it because people don't get upset about things that aren't true. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. If we are nothing more than a mirror of how we feel about ourselves internally. Yeah, this is true. And look, it, I, uh, the, the problem. Or the struggle that I face when I go uh, and do interviews, I've done a lot of big interviews where I get in front of large audiences that never seen me before, and they hear me talking about fitness and you know eat well, train hard, be disciplined, and they look at me and they see the way that I'm built, and, and what they hear is me. They think that I'm saying you need to look like me, you need to train yeah. like me. First of all, you couldn't. Absolutely. <laughs> second, oh, no, you can't. Yeah, I mean, well, look, if you're somebody who says that or thinks that, you absolutely, you absolutely can. <laughs> Right, because your mindset tells me all I need to know. But what I'm saying is, you need to train hard, you need to eat good, so you can be the best version of you, whatever that looks like. Because the beautiful part about the best version of yourself is it's a, a continuous work in progress. Yeah, and there's always a new level. You're never done with the gym. You're never done with fitness. You're never done with wellness. It's a journey that you can take forever. And the beautiful part is, there's always a next level. I believe it's our responsibility as humans to reach that. Cons, I love that. Constant and never ending. That's it. That can, be, that can end the podcast. Yeah. We got a lot more to you guys. But I mean, the truth is, is like, if you don't have that mindset that you want to literally wake up day in and day out and evolve beyond what you were the day before, what's the fucking point, bro? We have, I watched, have fun being a loser forever. That's what I say to people who don't have that mindset because that's what's going to happen. And I'm not calling you a loser, but what I am saying is this in life. There's winners and there's losers. Yeah. There's objectively nothing in between. You're exactly. either objectively winning or objectively losing. You'll look at the scoreboard of life, all the human metrics that matter, right? Yeah. Health, yeah. finance, career, family. Yeah. What does the score say? Okay. Yeah. I'm not the one who makes the determination if your life is a, a win or a loss. Yeah. The scoreboard of your life does it. The, the thing about that, the thing about being disciplined and working hard and, and improving is that's how you're going to find that thing you're looking for that everybody's looking for i can't seem to find yeah which is fucking happiness no it's totally true i mean bro you, you, you nailed it i mean i always go back to this vibrational scale but like the average person is in victimhood yeah and and, and not aware of that by well, that's, that's, right. that's exactly what i was going to say i mean and t bro let's just be honest and i knew you met gabby my youngest mm -hmm. and, and i tell her this every day because she definitely has a victim mindset she's on the tip you know the tip yeah, yeah, yeah. they have yeah. victim mindset yeah. because as you know that's what they're taught they're taught it's not their fault. They're taught that it's the man's responsibility or, or, or something, something external yeah. is the problem. Yeah. Right. And so I tell it every single day, I'm like, yeah, until you can wake up and you can get to a place where you say, dad, I own this. I'm personally accountable. Yeah. And it's my fault. Even when it's not. Yeah. That's what I want people to know. Yeah. It's your fault because you are the only one that have control over your outcomes, over your behavior. Everything that happens in this world the only thing we can control is our response to it, right? Yeah. Our vibration determines whether or not we are going to be in victimhood or we are going to be sovereign and personally accountable. It's literally that true. Yeah, you, you know that. And I completely agree with that. And just to kind of further that point, yeah. I had a victim mindset the majority of my life. So did I. The way, that I, I get the way that I grew up, right? I, again, abuse across the board. Mother, 16, drug addict, father took off pros, even born. Foster home, true poems. I, I wasn't, you know, they said, oh, you weren't helping out as a kid. I actually wasn't. Yeah. I actually wasn't. And I could very well, 
use my story and have it be a sad story and get attention and sympathy from people. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Guess what? It doesn't change what happened, nor does it actually fix me and help me heal and help sure. me move forward. So the fact is it wasn't my fault necessarily that I was abused, but it is certainly my responsibility to assign meaning to it. And instead of assigning meaning to it, oh, I want everybody to feel bad for me. I want to use this as an excuse to be a complete and total fucking failure in every human metric. I decided to use it as an excuse as to why I needed to succeed. Mm -hmm. Instead of using it as an excuse of why I can't, I decided to say, you know what? This is why I must. I think that's a far more productive mindset to have because bad shit is going to happen. Yeah. Plan on it. As we said at the beginning of this, the worst thing to happen to you is actually the best thing to happen to you, provided you address it and look at it as such. Well, so you're an advanced soul. You know, my audience have a lot of advanced souls. I'm an advanced soul. And, and then again, I, this is not e egoic or egocentric or arrogance, but you said it already best. Like when you reach a level of personal awareness, you know, like in the military, they call it situational awareness, right? Like where you know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. You can look in the mirror every day. You know whether you're skinny, lean, fat, fit, or any of that, and you can accept it. And you can obviously work to improve it, or to you know, if you have uh, uh, you want to build muscle, then you're you know you're going to build more muscle. If you want to lose fat, you're going to lose fat. Again, it's it's the awareness of what you want to change, right? And I understand people are going to say, "Well, I don't want to change, right?" Well, that's you should victim mindset. But but getting back to what you just said, you shouldn't want to change. I, I mean, bro, I mean that whole point, right? Like the only thing in life that's inevitable is change. I mean, think about that, right? Like people don't want to change. They want to live in their box their whole life. They live in their same house, the same street. They don't want to change. Like, how can you evolve as a soul? But they want, but they want, but they want to be happy. Right. And 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 and, and growth. Right. The only way you will ever be happy is through growth, because in order to grow, you have to do what? Fucking change. From entropy comes creation. Yeah. So yeah, I think pe pe people want change, but they don't want to change. Right. Right. Because it takes work, right? But but getting back to to what you were just saying and, and, and to kind of see, because I we are going to talk about spirituality and you know the toad is like yeah. all this amazing shit that you and I are experiencing. Yeah, yeah. And the, the truth is, is that every person comes in as a soul and they choose their life experience from a standpoint of like, what is going to happen to me that is going to allow me to grow the most, right? Like you're an advanced soul and you knew that in this life you were going to come in and all that shit that was going to happen to you was going to make you who you'd become, right? And it was it was inevitable. And if people can look at their life, for, you know, just call it their, their horizon, and they can look at all the things that they've labeled as bad or a debacle or a collapse or you know, a divorce, a financial destruction, a loss of a job, a loss of a fucking spouse, a loss of a parent, you know, child, dog, whatever, and just look at that as like that bump in the road. That allows you to maneuver beyond everything is great but again you said it best earlier in this in the show is that you know you said that most people they either choose to win or they choose to lose and if you choose to lose it's because you do have a victim mindset and you both of us have victim mindsets for large parts of our life there's a lot of people who have victim mindsets for various reasons yes but what every single person has a victim mindset has in common is the fact they're unaware of the fact they have a So anybody who's hearing this, you, you have to examine your own thoughts. If you are somebody who literally thinks anybody is anybody else's fault, if you blame the finances of your life on anything or anybody, you have to understand, not only is that a victim mindset, that mindset is keeping you trapped. It's keeping you enslaved in the current circumstances of your life. The thing about having a victim mindset is if you possess a victim mindset, I believe objectively that it basically you, you forfeit your ability to experience feelings of happiness. How can you how can you be happy if you're a victim? If you yeah. see yourself as a victim, how can you be happy if you're in these chains of victimization all the time? You can't be happy. Well, and and, and when you're and when you're in that too, your thoughts stay victim. Yeah. You, you don't create. I mean, we we both know. Obviously, you know, I, I love um, you know um, his name just escaped me. Who I was going to say? But he loves him. <laughs> But just the idea that it's the philosopher and just, it just his name fell out of my head. But just the idea that if you imagine exactly what you ultimately desire, why would you ever think negative things, right? Because we, our thoughts become things. We can create our reality, right, with our words, thoughts, and actions. But at the end of the day, Neville Goddard, that's who I was trying to say. Neville Goddard, he has this amazing little data. He is this one. <laughs> very phallic. It's very phallic. And right behind it, I have the heart. Yeah, like, you know, okay. just don't lose the perspective. Guys. Yeah, yeah. 
Got all these crystals to get the demons out of Tampa. Thing with your heart. House. Not your penis. But, 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 but truthfully, like, the, the truth is we, we create a reality. So, I mean, if you know that you create your reality with your thoughts, again, you're in obviously your words and of course your actions, actions have to, you have to take massive action like you and I have in our lives. But at the end of the day, like, I always think this, like, how can you think negative thoughts? Like, yes, you're a victim if you're doing it, but if you literally know that your thoughts create your reality, how can you think negative? You, 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 it's like you said, you wake up in the morning and just literally adopt a positive mindset. Yeah, you would think it'd be that easy. The, the, the issue is most people are not even in control of their own mind. That's a whole other problem in and of itself. If your mind is not even on your team, okay, that's a problem. You have to sort that out because they say we have like 60,000 thoughts a day. Yeah, like after, uh, you know, 90 or excuse me, 80% of them are negative. So the question is, do you believe it is possible to live a positive life if 80% of your thoughts are negative? I'm going to answer for all of you. Genius is out. And buys it. Which is why positive thinking needs to become intentional. Yes. You know what I mean? It needs yeah. to become intentional. And that's not to say that you will never have negative thoughts. It's not to say that I don't have negative thoughts every single day. Right. The difference is you develop an awareness over them. You're able to correct them in real time and correct them, the narrative uh, in your internal dialogue. Yeah. Also, of course, correct it with behavior and action and things that come out of your mouth. Yeah, beautiful. All right. So let's transition before we get into the spiritual stuff. Let's transition just to talk a little bit about nutritional solutions. Um, as I said already, you guys, the food is amazing. Uh, I'm going to be you know, talking about it, obviously, in a blog coming in, and of course, an email to all everybody on my email list, you know, talking to you guys about the products and stuff like that. But um, just how did you get into that? And, and then just talk a little bit about the evolution of the business. So I was a drug dealer for many years. After I got out of the military, I regressed massively because what you're around, who you're around shapes your mindset, dictates yeah. your values. And I wasn't uh, conscious of the time of just how beneficial being in the military was for me. I thought, well, I'm good now and go and just do this other thing, whatever. And, um, you know, three months after I got out of the military, I found myself working in the strip club. Long story short, I mean, I thought that was a great idea as a young man. Like, they're going to pay me to work in an establishment where I get to look at night and beautiful women <laughs> all night. <laughs> yeah, let's fucking go. But the mindset that I had at the time, I uh, was very aggressive. I was prone to, uh, violence. I, I had a bad temper because I was insecure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in this environment. It was an outlaw uh, brand establishment, the motorcycle. Club, the outlaw. They had a very specific way that they wanted really customers to be handled. So, yeah. so that I'm in, I'm, this is happening every night. I'm messing with the girls. It's always drama on shift because at any given time at that point in my life, 23, 24 years old, I mean, I was having concurrent relations with six girls who happened to be in the same room here, but I loved it at the time. It was just, it was constant drama, but Making a long story short, the stress of that environment became too much, and I subsequently quit and became a drum dealer. So, sold anabolic steroids for many years. Long story short, got to a point where, um, you know, it was just time for a change. I'm going to accelerate the story. A lot happened uh, in that in that uh, period of my life. I learned a lot. I grew a lot. I was held accountable for my actions. But through the, process, the personal development, I basically came across an opportunity to start my company, Nutrition Solutions. And what that opportunity basically was, was I was deficient in nutrition at 27, 28 years old. Yeah. I was young. I was an ambassador of the product that I was selling. Sure. I'm so I was taking the gear, yeah. working out young. You could eat whatever and be right. in really good shape. But I, I was aware that I didn't know anything about nutrition and I wanted to eat better. And I wasn't eating enough. I wasn't eating portion control, these sure, were all foreign sure, concepts sure. for me. But I basically went to a uh, local catering company and asked them if they'd be willing to uh, make X amount of meals for myself, like eight of my friends. Yeah. And the, the, when I say this is how my business started, there wasn't an intention to start the business. The only intention I had at that point was to be able to cover the cost of my meals. Yeah. yeah to yeah, be able yeah. to buy them from them in a way where I could just cover the cost of my meals and I was able to do that. I had a bunch of other guys that I knew that wanted to also get in good shape, but didn't have time to cook, didn't have the desire to cook, didn't sure, know sure. the, the, you know, ins and outs. Real problem is hard, man. I mean, it takes work. It's time consuming. Yeah, it is. And then, you know, throughout the course of uh, time and continuing to evolve my uh, physical fitness and mental fitness um, and just adopting the mindset that I did, which was just one of continuous growth. Um, you know, things started to work out. We're an eight figure company now. And I honestly believe we haven't even scratched the surface of what we're capable of. And I think, you know, 2023, 
will be when it's all said and done, which is here in the next uh, week. It'll be a best year ever in 2000. You should thank you, brother. 2024 is going to put it to shame. We have a, a very aggressive uh, game plan for 2024. Basically, what we do is we help people get in the best shape of their life with no stress. Yeah. You don't have to think, you don't have to go to the grocery store and meal prep and allocate however many hours uh, on a Sunday, whenever, no dishes, no thinking. You, you just have protein, nutrient dense meals that arrive on your doorstep every single week. So it helps people get in really good shape without stress because a lot of times, 95, a lot of times, 95% of times, in fact, people that start a diet will fit. And they know for various reasons, but usually it's a lack of consistency. Yeah. And really, we kind of absolve that issue because when you have a refrigerator full of high protein, nutrient dense meals at all times, it makes staying consistent with your diet, health, and eating efforts. Well, let me just say this as a, and for you guys that know me, I mean, obviously, I've written four, you know, international best selling books on fat loss and, and, and fasting and losing body fat and, you know, doing all the things that he has essentially, quote unquote, mastered. And made into this efficient company, again, Nutrition Solutions, which you guys are going to hear a lot more about in a blog and then, of course, from my email list. But like, I just think back to like my time in this game, right? And I'm 13 years, almost 13 years older than you. And like, man, if I had a company like yours when I was like in my late 20s and my early 30s, it would have saved me so much time and effort, right? And yeah, you could hire, you know, down where back in the day, you know, you'd be like, oh, I were a college kid and teach them how to make your food and all that shit. Right? And so it's like, I've been through all that, but like, I just want, you know, just to be, you know, stated that like, if you're in my ecosystem and my lifestyle and you're using the 30 days to shreds protocol and, you know, you use peptides and you're on, you're hormonally optimized, maybe you're using growth hormone, maybe you're using all the things that we talk about. Like his company makes it so simple, guys. I mean, like I, I should have bought a couple of the meals. Oh, it's all good. They just send them to you literally in a box. Everything is prepackaged. You literally take off the label. You pop it in a microwave. You can also, that was another thing my wife wanted me to ask you about. You can obviously use them in a deep fryer if you wanted to. You just take them out with plastic, right? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, like not a deep fryer, but you know, what do they call the hair fryer? Air yeah. Because my wife makes a lot of fish in them. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, the plastic people offer one or, oh, it's in plastic. Our, our plastic, obviously, is BPA free. Costs yeah. three times as much <laughs> as the, the, the nine BPA free. But this is the thing. Standards are very important to me. Are very rep representative in, in our company. Our, our food, we prioritize quality. We use organic produce. We use uh, the best protein superfoods yes. on the planet. Yes. Things like elk, yes. venison, bison, yes. grass fed, grass finished beef. Yeah. We, again, we prioritize the healthiest, fittest, most dominant protein superfoods because that's what we're looking to do with our clients. We're looking to help our clients become the healthiest, fittest, most dominant version. Of themselves. One other thing I want to put out here, I yeah. recognize your community is very keto centric and all that. Look, please don't reach out to us asking us to do a complicated diet specific for you because we do not do that at the size of our company. Of course. It would be a logistical nightmare. And although we appreciate you thinking of us, it's just logistically impossible at this stage. Well, so the good news is, is my community. I told Jay no as well. Yeah. So, I mean, my, but my community is smart. You're not going to get that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the truth is, is like my community is masters for the most yeah. part, right? Like they're going to do one day they don't eat and the next day they're going to eat all your meals. Perfect. Right. So it's like, they're not, they don't count calories. You know, it's feast or famine, right? Yeah. Like you're going through autophagy and hormesis okay. one day. And then the next day it's like repletion. We're going to eat. And, and and look, guys, I'm just being straight up honest with you. I probably had what 10 percent of the actual meals that you had not a single one did i not say holy shit like when my daughters were making food in the last couple of days i've been traveling a lot i just got in stuff a couple of weeks ago but i when they make it i smell it i'm in the other room and i walk in so i mean as he said it's wholesome it's organic it's mostly grass-fed wild-caught sustainable stuff and truthfully bro like we should talk about this before we get into the lyrical stuff the food in the united states is fucking contaminated it's so bad. Like you can't go out to eat, bro. Like even here in Tampa where we live, you go to a nice restaurant. How many times do you order a fucking steak or some other fish and you taste the chemicals on the food? Yeah, I think so. Uh, if you're going to go out to eat, I think you just have to have that understanding that that's what you're going to be dealing with. If you're doing that once in a while, I don't think it's going to kill you though. It is annoying. <laughs> it is annoying. When you think you're, you know, you're ordering something healthy, try to be mindful and you taste it. Or 10 minutes after the meal, you feel the chemical. <laughs> you feel it. Yeah. And you, you like, that's the thing. And, and you're right. So no, it's true. The food supply, the primary food supply, I should say, is contaminated. Okay. But 
that's another excuse people use. Yeah. Okay. Look, this is the way it is. This is the way the world is. Now, we're not going to change that. We can't change that. But understanding the rules gives us the opportunity to basically maneuver around these parameters because we are, in fact, living in a country that monetizes poisoning its residents. And, and, and they don't do it because they don't like you or right. your children. They're doing it because in order, in order to be a superpower, it costs money. And in order to be powerful and in control and be able to make all these decisions, you absolutely need to uh, be making, you need to have the resources to do that. And what easier way than to contaminate the food to where people get fat, stick, and then obviously become reliant on prescription medication that, you know, interesting, none of the prescription medication that people are taking, whether it's, you know, shit for obesity or shit for depression. Yeah. It's funny. It doesn't actually cure no. the issue. Band-Aid. So you're on it forever and you're taking more than then you take it long enough and you get this other sip and you get another more medication. So just having this awareness, I think is important because it gives you the opportunity to do things better. I mean, if you want things to be different, then you have to do things different. You can't use it as an excuse. Like I said, we are in control of our own destiny. Your life is your responsibility. Everything. People get so pissed off when I say this, but everything is your fault. Everything that's what I say happens to you. Everything that has happened to you is either your fault or certainly your responsibility. To touch your life in any way, shape, or form, it's your responsibility to figure it oh, out. Oh, I love that. I mean, I didn't even say that about Gabby, but that's what I tell her. Monica gets mad. She's like, you, you need to change your choice of words. And I'm like, no, I say it's your fault because it's powerful, yeah. demonstrative turn. Agreed. And, and, and people have to take responsibility for their actions. And if saying it's your fault makes them offended, then guess what? They're going to look into taking more accountability immediately because now they're personally invested. Yeah. Like it's not my fault. What do you mean? Let me, let, let me give an example that yeah. triggers the shit out. Yeah. I believe as a man, if you get cheated on, it's your fault. And in one hundred percent of cheating scenarios, it is the man's fault. That's always true. People hear that. Like, no, well she did the, whatever. Look, you should have treated her better. You should have been more aware. Right. right, like the fact that she banged 16 of your <laughs> fucking friends, you knew that ahead of time, but you, you still made the decision. I know that's out, you know, a, a, a very crazy analogy, but the fact is the reason I say it's your fault and the reason I think people's problems are their fault is unless you truly own them, yeah. unless you truly take responsibility, you do not have the opportunity to grow from them. Then that's a fact. Yeah. And then that's, that's present in 100% of cases. If you do not accept 100% responsibility and take ownership over whatever problem, whether it's cheating, whether it's right. your fat body or whatever the fuck, you don't have the opportunity to learn and grow from it. That's, Bro, a, that's a missed opportunity. I love that. And, and everything that happens to us is a direct response of something that we did in life that we deserve. Something you did or did not do. I, yeah, I mean, but I mean, I, I would say like, if it happens, it's because you are supposed to learn and grow and evolve through it happening. Whether it offends you or it doesn't offend you, it's an opportunity for growth and evolution. But you have to look at it that way. And most people label it as, oh, you know, I mean, think about it. Most people's divorces, one spouse cheats on the other and then it ends. The spouse they got cheated on, it becomes even more victimized. And labels their entire life as so and so cheat, uh, and they go on to attract more yeah. partners that cheat on. Them. Of course, yeah. So it's like if if we can just not label things that happen to us initially that we may not desire ultimately, right? Like the way I look at it is like whatever happens to you, you have two choices: you can either react out of fear, which is eighty percent of people, which is the victim, or you can respond out of love. And responding out of love takes thought. Yes. It takes focus. It takes effort. It literally takes discernment. You need to pull back and you need to be like, wait a minute. I didn't really enjoy this. Like, I want less of this. Mm. Right? But it's not like reaction. But it's not I'm going to do this or whatever. And But dude, those people that act like that and react like that, they, that's their one. That's, that's it's not my fault. So why don't I right. to continue to do things exactly in the same way? And that's that zero. You're right. And then it becomes like an alternative personality that comes out with everyday experience, any kind of contrast. It's sad. But I would say it's, it's, it's your fault. I'm not saying you deserve it. I'm not saying anybody deserves to be cheated on. What I am saying, unless you accept full responsibility and truly get to a point where you confidently and honestly say, it is my fault. Until then, you forfeit your opportunity to learn and grow from that life experience. Yes. 
And adversity is important. I mean, adversity, I believe, is necessary for a human's optimal development. And the more adversity we face, the better. Yeah, the better. That's beautifully said. All right, let's let's transition yeah. into like the real jam of this podcast. And, and you know, both of us, when we first met each other a couple of months back, and again, Chris Gaffin, shout out to Chris, you know, introduced us to. He's like, bro, I got to introduce you to Chris. He's in Tampa. I can't believe I never introduced you. So anyway, you know, we know each other now, and here we are having this amazing podcast. And it is amazing. Um, what what was your first introduction to the world? Probably mushrooms. Um, yeah. I mean, so high school doesn't count, right? Because yeah. my attention was different. The, yeah. the you know handful of times I did mushrooms in high school, but the first time uh, I would say I did psilocybin was about four years ago, and uh, it wasn't enjoyable. I think a lot of people have that part mixed up. Oh. <laughs> I had a bad trip. It's like, yeah, it, it's not what happens during. It's what happens after where the value uh, comes into play. But I think, again, that's just a reaction, not to so much talk about other people. But I think, again, when somebody experiences something that's unfamiliar and extremely uncomfortable and meet the immediate response is, like, oh, negative. yeah, negative. Exactly. Um, and, and I liked it. And I, I, I realized that, uh, I still had some trauma. I'd worked very hard for a long time to sort myself out. I'm still actively in that. Oh, process. All of them. Yeah. But, uh, realized, you know, through the research and, and, and different authorities that I heard speaking on the topic and people that I know that I trust that utilized it and had uh, significant positive experiences. I realized that this is something that could probably really help me. And, um, eventually I was called to do ayahuasca and, uh, went to, Costa Rica in December of 2019, we did a uh, four-day ayahuasca experience, if you will, four back-to-back, back-to-back ceremonies. And yeah, that was, that was your life. It, it absolutely changed my life. I mean, it changed my life because it showed me the things about my life that needed to be fixed. And then it was up to me to go do the work to sort those things out. But again, I was unaware of why I was feeling the way that I was feeling. So if I can ask, yeah, please, because obviously we're sharing our stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to share my stuff too, but like what were your biggest issues at that, that time? you really didn't address that really why, why the plant, you know, again, the amplifier of it, you know, again, the whole, like just boom, you know, I always tell people like the plant or the toad, it never gives you what you desire. It gives you what you need. Yeah. Right. And so what you in that space, what was it that needed to improve? So, so it, it certainly wasn't anything from my childhood. It sure. wasn't anything from my past. It wasn't anything, you know, my, my, daddy issues, whatever, yeah. because, uh, when I was, I actually tracked out my father uh, about four years ago, I met him for the first time because I thought that's what a man should do. I didn't have any hostility toward him. Sure. Although most of my life I did, but when I realized yeah. that was all built, bullshit, yeah, of course. I felt a bit of guilt if I'm being honest. Sure. So there was no abuse or trauma or anything. I'd, I believe I'd, I'd sorted that out through my own, uh, personal development journey. But how was that though? When you met him? it was good. It was powerful. I honestly walked away from it feeling a lot lighter, which was really interesting. So how was your dad? Good. He was like the complete opposite of me, a blue collar guy from up north. Uh, but yeah. Dad, like, was he devastated that he wasn't involved in your life? Yeah. You know, my, my mother, has, yeah. she had a lot of problems. She made his life quite difficult. Plus, he was 68. I mean, who could, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Of course so. But like, are you guys friends? Now? Yeah, we, we, we text each other. That's we, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's nice to be able yeah. to say that. It really, That's amazing. Yeah. It really is. Um, you know, he, he does his best. And, um, I, I honestly have nothing bad to say. Is he, uh, is he married and have children? He doesn't have any more uh, children. He is, uh, he did get remarried and, uh, yeah, they're doing quite well up in New Hampshire. That's so cool. Bro. Yeah. That's awesome. But in 2019, I, I had a couple successful years. I'm starting to create some traction sure. with my business, starting to make some money, starting to grow my personal brand. Yep. Yeah. But still so fucking stressed out. I was still so stressed out, like all of the time to the point where it was like draining my soul. And because I was so stressed, I was, I'd be projecting that onto people that I cared about, onto my team, onto, sure. again, people sure. in my uh, personal life. And so just stress from the hustle. Stress from the hustle, right. Well, and when I learned uh, probably night two of the um, ayahuasca ceremony is my problem wasn't the stress. My problem actually wasn't the problem. It was my attitude about the resistance. See, I was like thinking, and I remember in this that victim mentality, even at that time, I was thinking like, I'm working so hard right. and I'm doing all these things right. And I'm helping so many people, right, right. but why do I constantly da, 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 da. And then, you know, I, for people who've never done, uh, 
any type of uh, psychedelic, especially one like DMT or, or, or ayahuasca. This might be difficult for you to uh, understand. Basically, was having a conversation with my highest self, you know, okay? As I was having the conversation with my highest self, I was also somehow aware of those two. So there was three different co levels of consciousness yeah, happening there. There was my low level of consciousness, yes. the victim yep. mindset, and then there's a higher level of consciousness. Basically, totally. giving myself advice, giving myself, putting things into perspective. And then there was the level of consciousness that I was existing in, observing this Hulagahian. And it was uh, really amazing because it helped me realize that discomfort is actually healing. The discomfort that I was feeling was not an indication that something was wrong. In fact, it was actually the opposite. The fact that I was uncomfortable, the fact that I was the fact that I had problems going on was evidence that I was growing. And it was my perspective because for some fucked up reason at that point in my life, I had thought that you would get to a certain point of business and all your problems went away. <laughs> and you just make a ton of money and have a ton of impact and no fucking props. I have absolutely no idea why I thought that. But the truth is I did. And honestly, in a split second, everything fucking changed because my perspective changed. And if all of a sudden that stress, it didn't hurt me. Awesome. It didn't hurt anymore. I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be there. Cool. Yeah. And that changed fucking everything because stress fuck your shit up. As you know, as as you know, as I'm sure a lot of the people listening to this know. That was probably the most uh, you know, significant lesson. There's so many uh through throughout that one. One uh good story that I like to tell about that uh that experience in Costa Rica was I mean, th there's a lot of powerful breakthroughs and transformative experiences that people sure. will experience depending on what their intention is, depending on their life experience, depending on a number of variables. But one of the miracles that I experienced wasn't even a miracle for me uh, specifically. I witnessed night one somebody who was deaf, in her right ear, been deaf for her entire life in her right ear, are hearing that. I was, I, was, I was this close to it. It was probably to this day one of the most powerful experiences of my life because seeing her reaction, feeling that energy, and her husband was there as well. It was. You can only imagine like the type of like motion that was, uh, and then, and then, so the, the, the reason that I like to point that one, that really made me believe that truly anything is possible. Yeah. Like truly anything right. is possible. Not with psychedelics, just in life, anything is possible. If somebody can travel to the jungle and take these two species of plants that someone throughout the course of human history figured out that if you brew them together, these powerful psychedelic effects. If somebody can take that medicine, have their hearing come back for the first time in their life, surely people can figure out how to lose 20 pounds or, you know, take their income past 100K or, you know, sweat out their family the, the, the way that they envision. There's yeah. absolutely no excuse to not live the life you want. And I'm going to take it a step further. I believe living your life being less than what you're capable of being, I believe that's disrespectful to God. Yeah. That's a beautiful statement, man. I, I don't even want you to use the word believe anymore. I want you to stop. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. Because you do. Yeah. Uh, dude, that's amazing. I mean, the whole, like, like the hearing thing. I mean, I, I've done, so I've never done ayahuasca, as I told you, but I've done uh, the toad five times. I've done three synthetic, and then the last two, I've done organico, right? So it's like right on the beach at sunrise, which I just had my last one the day after Chris had one, you know, in Mexico. Chris Gatlin, we both did the toad, and it was Oh my God, dude, it was so unbelievable. So I always, I always do it with my wife. My wife's done now three juries with wow. me. And we did it with this girl that we know who's this young, you know, she's 20 I, and she's like this big social media connector. She's such a heart of gold, amazing person, super connected to people. And just watching her, you know, experience it and watch her ego die in like the first 15 minutes of the ceremony. As you know, it's, it's everybody has their own unique experience yeah, yeah. and adventure. And obviously, you don't want to be in resistance. I always tell people, like, if you're going to do any form of plant medicine or code, you got to let it happen. Yeah, the one thing you don't want to be yeah. is in fear, right? Like, you just go in, open the plant or the toad. It's going to give you exactly what you ultimately require to evolve uh, and just not be in resistance to it. But, you know, going back to your story, like, I had the same thing. Bro. Like, you were becoming successful. You had all this past and crazy, you know, again, inspirational life story, but Guys like us, man, like when we're on the come up, it's like we have anxiety because we really do want to serve people at our highest and best all the time. And we get 
anxious when we don't think it's happened yet. And, and the problem is, is like, it's just our resistance to the idea that it isn't because it always is, right? But you're in resistance to the idea that it isn't. So it's like, I always tell people like, when you can get to, you said it best at the very beginning of the show and, and I'm so grateful that we're doing this podcast. I mean, the reality is, is that it's always awareness, bro. Okay. When you lack awareness, when you live, you're again, you're a wishful thinker. You live in the delusion of the illusion, right? That's what I call it, the delusion of the illusion. And you're not willing to look at and take an honest through snapshot and perceptual awareness of like what's going on in your life. You can't ever get to a place that the plant is going to ultimately like explode in your reality sphere, right? Like Because you're not actually still looking at things from an actual truth perspective. You're looking at, again, you're in the delusion of your illusion. Right. And most people, that's where they want to be, right? We all have heard the story, ignorance of bliss, but it's not. Because ignorance never allows you to get beyond. You stay on the, let's just call it the reincarnation merry go round yeah. And you just keep going back and back. You can have it another body after die. And you keep playing the materialism game. And you never, ever expand as a soul to like figure out like, you know what the purpose, what is the purpose of this? It's not to have more money and nice cars and a beautiful wife and more girls and all that stuff. The purpose is literally to love and to get them, excuse me, to give love and to receive love. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be married or, you know, have children or anything to give love and receive love. You just have to have an open heart right. to actually give and receive. And, and truthfully, the plant, in my experience, in my knowing, opens the heart. And when it opens the heart, everything is now able to be received. Mm -hmm. Everything is able to be accepted. Everything is able to be allowed. You're not in resistance. And that's where you and I were. We were in resistance because we wanted more for the other people that we were serving. Yeah. We didn't think that we were giving it to them, even though we were. You absolutely nailed it. Because after I had that like perspective change, I also thought, you know, not only was I stressed and doing all the right things, I thought I wasn't growing. I thought I wasn't succeeding. And then I was blind. I was blind. So then when I no longer felt like that, so I could see things objective. It's like, holy shit. You know, I look at the, 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 I mean, we're talking about measurable results. Yes. Everything will have been elevated. But the problem is if you're growing at an uncontrollable rate, even, and you're perpetually stressed and in that mindset, you don't feel like you're growing and, yeah. it, and, it, and it deprives you of the opportunity to experience the uh, feelings of happiness that essentially come with growth. That's Beautifully well said, man. I mean, any other experiences that you want to talk about, like doing plants or the toad? I, yeah, I did. I did the. I did the toad. You know, one time, and such a difficult thing to explain. Uh, you know what actually happened? What happened during was, you know, not as uh, important as what happened <laughs> after the fact. But for me, somebody who has made becoming more aware, more conscious, uh, intention, because the more. Uh, one other thing after uh ayahuasca ceremony that I noticed probably uh six months into 2020 is I noticed that I was now able to keep up with more things at a very high level than I previously was without being stressed and sure, sure, sure. So with that, that's basically the definition of higher consciousness. Yes. I was more conscious of more things in real time, keeping up with those things at a higher level without having it feel overwhelming. And that that's awesome because as an entrepreneur, I mean, the further you go, the higher you go, the more shit you got. Right, and the more shit you're responsible for. But with the uh, with the toad, you know, every psychedelic experience, I immediately come back. I'd say the first thing I feel is gratitude, so, and a, a little, perhaps a little bit of guilt because it makes you aware of things. It shows you the shitty things, yes. like it shows you who you really are. Yes. The worst parts. It doesn't show you what you want to see. It shows you what you need to see. So exactly. you have a little bit of guilt, but that guilt it's it's actually a good thing because it compels you into taking uh, the necessary uh, changes. But I would say that really hyped my awareness as well. I became uh, very aware, like in conversations with people where I was basically like having a discussion and I was starting, it was, let's say the conversation has started to get a little heated. Mm -hmm. I would basically see in my mind what I would have said previously and not make it heated. <laughs> what was what I was said previously, but <laughs> and never came. Then I would say what I needed to say, but dude, there wasn't even a, like a small blip in the flow, it was fucking insane. I'm like thinking, and it's all a house to be all the time. Well, you're, Definitely. you're the ultimate observer. Yeah. And it helped me. It basically helped me see like who I used to be. Yes. 
yeah. before I was that person again, because being able to see it like that's like, oh, the stress, the stress addict, the anxiety real person. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. same thing. Dude, when I, when I first met Monica, you just met Monica today, but she's been like my greatest spiritual mentor. I mean, when I, we met on match.com back in 2012 oh, and cool. I was coming out of my divorce and dude, it was an annihilation, uh, without going into it. Most of the guys on this show know my story and stuff like that, but like, I was the same way, bro. I mean, I was anxiety riddled, stress addicted, drama addicted. I mean, let's face it, bro. Like guys like us, like when you make things happen, sometimes you like the drama. You like creating that bullshit, right? So like I, I, I'm bringing that up. Significance. I bring that up because the plant, and again, for me, it hasn't been the plant. Yes, I've done psilocybin, of course, but for me, it's been the toad. Mm -hmm. Bro, the toad has made me out. It's made me centered. People that read auras now, when I come into a room, they'll say like, wow, you know, like you're very centered. And I was the most non-centered person on the planet. I was a maniac. I was the guy, like, if you cut off in traffic, I'd get up next to you and say, pull over, it's time to die. You know, and if you were there, right? So it's like, we, we've all been down there, but like these things, again, whether it's ayahuasca, where it's psilocybin, you know, whether it's a different plant, uh, whether it's 5-MeO, I highly recommend people to experiment, to experience these things because they literally can, they're so transcendental. They yeah. really can transform your consciousness. Now, Obviously, I would ask or hope that or request that you are already walking somewhat of a spiritual path. The one thing I also want yeah. to say, and then you get the final say, well, on this is, uh, and this is going to sound like woo, but bro, since the second one, not the first one, I already told you the first one, again, you guys know I cried, which seemed like for 24 hours, which is 30 to 35 minutes. Everybody that was in the circle was crying with me when I came out. I was like, what the happened? I basically said I probably shed my entire generational trauma, but Bro, since I had the second experience, and now obviously I've had five, I can't kill life. I can't. I, I literally can't even bring myself to kill a mosquito. Interesting. I, I like if I'm outside, you know, my lanai or whatever, and there's bugs inside my thing, fireflies, dragonflies, even we've given up hornets and wasps. In the past, I would swat it, I'd kill it, and be like, hey, this is a nuisance. But now it's like my whole, like, my respect for sentient life is like, I got to. I got to aid this thing, you know, and because again, dude, I'm now looking at things from a standpoint of like, holy shit, we really are all connected. Yeah. All life is conscious. All life is sentient. When you really start looking at things, like even the rocks, the trees, the grass, you know, and I, you know, I can bring up my, uh, my experience in Peru, which was by the way, that same time that you had your experience. Oh, really? Puerto Rico to the IK, that's when I was in Peru. Wow. That was my first Chris. Yeah. And, and again, some of these guys know, but I'll just share it real quick again. Yes. I did a, 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 a ceremony, my, my, me and my wife and two people that went with us, another husband and wife couple. And we went into Lake Titicaca and, you know, it was cold. It was in the, um, the summer, which is their, their, their winter. Cause again, summer is in, the, is in the winter there, but it was, we were in the July. So it was cool, but we had jeans on and stuff like that. And so we pulled our jeans up, you know, like. Up then, and we got into the water, and dude, the guy just did a little ceremony with the Rickley leaf, no plant medicine. And I swear to you, I mean, I know you know this, but the the the, the Blake came alive and kissed us, and all four of us, including our shaman or our guide, he wasn't really a shaman; he was our guide, he was an indigenous guide. We all started spontaneously tearing up. Wow! And now the two people who were with us are not like you and me; they're not advanced from a standpoint of like doing plant medicine, right. understanding this kind of stuff. And the guy was questioning it, like, what just happened? This is like a magic trick. Like, who did this under, right? But like, after that is when I became completely aware of all life. Mm -hmm. And it was like, now I can't kill bugs. Now I can't harm other beings. Like now this big, tough, you know, egoic person is like, all of a sudden has this insane respect for life. So, I mean, I, I know it was from that. I mean, obviously I started to go down that path from the second time I did the 5-MEO, but bro, after that happened, it was like, oh my God, I literally will pick up bugs and take them outside of the nature. Yeah. For you, man. I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to say that to brag. It's just like, I just have this overwhelming it's changed you. feeling. Yeah. Of like, oh my God, I, 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 I respect all life. I mean, that's a good feeling to navigate your way in life. And look, your life is crazy. The world is crazy. So, I mean. I, I don't think personally psychedelics are for everybody. No, what I do think, what I do think is they can be for everybody. Yes, but there's work that needs to be done, and it's one of those things where you could hear something like this and it can be very overwhelming. If you're uh, just never heard anybody speak on it before, it's like, why would I want 
to be in a scenario where I feel like the, and you're, you're thinking, oh, you're just hallucinating because you're on drugs. The truth is, I know a lot of successful people that use psychedelics. A lot. Yeah. I do not know one that has had anything but a supremely positive experience. Great. It has changed them. It has helped them become more successful yes. because it has changed their values. It has changed the way they look at the world because it basically helps you see what areas of your life are not basically in alignment with the person you put on this planet to become. It shows you who you're supposed to be, and then it's up to you to do the work to get there. It's amazing. Yeah, we can, uh, uh, I mean, that's, I want to just give you a hug, bro. Drop it. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Was my drop, drop mic moment. That was amazing, man. So, I mean, guys and gals, uh, this has been a very profound podcast. Uh, let me just ha- pass it off to you. If you guys are interested in all these amazing prepackaged meals that his company creates, and again, I highly recommend that. How can they go about getting this? Yeah, so you can find me on uh, everywhere, all social media platforms. I'm most active on Instagram, Chris Cavallini. Companies Nutrition Solutions, same uh, on Instagram, nutritionsolutions.com. If uh, you're interested in uh, getting in the best shape of your life without stress, want to save a little time so you can enjoy the one and only life that you have to live, hit us up. We'd love the opportunity to make your life easier and make your body better. Chris, amazing call today. So guys and gals, go over to nutritionsolutions.com or connect and follow Chris and Chris Cavallini on Instagram. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.